Welcome to Who's Junction. Today I'm talking about the Cleveland Cavaliers and I'm going to be answering the question, are the Cleveland Cavaliers a, ba a bad team? Now when you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, they are 19 and 9. They're first in the East and they are the epitome of their epitome of the Eastern Conference. So like they they are what it is when it comes to the Eastern Conference. Now, they had a recent string of two Two really bad losses, in my opinion, to the Warriors on Christmas Day and to the Portland Trailblazers, which in both games, they couldn't break 90 points. The Cavaliers are having a huge, huge, huge problem with their offense. And Coach David Black recently said that a one bad loss doesn't make you a bad team. And to that, I say, one bad habit makes you a bad team. So... I understand where David Blatt's coming from with the one bad loss, and I completely agree with that. One bad loss does not make you a bad team. Yet, one bad habit can kill your team. And the Cavaliers have the bad habit of playing isolation basketball. There is too much talent on the Cleveland Cavaliers team for them to struggle scoring points. Right now, they are ranked 21st in, in the NBA in points per game. They are, they are below average scoring. The 21st, below average. And in terms of pace, the Cleveland Cavaliers are 20, ranked 28th. They're almost dead last. So their pace is poor, and they're barely getting enough points per game. So pretty much they've been staying in games based on their defense alone. And that shouldn't happen. A, a team that's ranked first in the East or first in the West should not be below average in anything. Point blank, period. And if they're struggling offensively, it's because they have not learned to adopt an offensive system that incorporates all of their players. The Cavaliers, they need to incorporate more ball movement and player movement in their offensive system. It can't be LeBron James gets the ball, pick and roll, isolate. It can't be Kyrie Irving gets the ball, pick and roll, isolate. It can't be put shooters on the floor. We'll, we'll play small, LeBron at the four, pick and roll, let me hit my shooters. It, that, that doesn't work anymore. It's not going to work. See what I'm saying? Because what you used last year was last year. This year is a whole brand new year. And, and surprisingly, the Eastern Conference has gotten way better. And the fact that they've gotten way better, for teams like the uh, Pacers, Pistons, the Bulls have gotten better. If all these other teams have gotten better, you need to get better in terms of the Cavs. So the Cavs need to get better and incorporate ball movement. And that's what they're lacking here, ladies and gentlemen. They have the horrendous ball movement. It's just like the ball goes to LeBron's hands and it sticks. The ball goes to J.R. Smith's hands and it sticks. And they're taking tough shots, tough fallaways, or tough like six dribbles. The guy takes six dribbles, backs down in the paint, tries to get a, a layup or a foul. The ball's not moving side to side. Only time we see ball movements on a fast break when they're throwing a lob, and it, it's ugly. It's ugly. It's it's hard to watch. You would think with all the offensive firepower, they would learn to figure out. Okay, let me pass this here. Let me pass this here. Let me pass to this corner. Throw it into the post. Let me get a cutter. Let me get a back screen. Let me back screen for this guy. There's none of that. And pretty much what it is is the the Cleveland Cavaliers are saying because we have stars, ball movement and player movement don't really matter to us because our stars are always going to bail us out. When you look at a team like the Golden State Warriors, what they're saying is player movement and ball movement reign supreme over whoever we have on the court. And you can see that because every time they're on the court playing, it doesn't matter who's on the court. They're always running the exact same sets to perfection. It doesn't matter who's playing. Now, the only thing that's the difference for Golden State is if the shots go in or not. Because they're going to get the same shots every night. The Cavaliers, they're not getting the same shots every night. Every night, it's a different shot based on what the defense is giving them. Because they have no offense to run in order to make sure that they get the same things over and over and over. It's not repro reproducible. That's what isolation basketball is. It's not reproducible. And we all know that when you play isolation basketball against the tougher teams, you're not going to win. And that is, is, is just a known fact. You can't, you can't beat a great team going one-on-one, one-on-five. -on -one, one -on it doesn't work. It will not work. And I feel sorry 
in the fact that, <clears throat> you know, like, you know, sometimes people feel like um, we we judge the Cavaliers to a hard, high, higher standard. And it's true that we do. It's just because you have all of that talent. We may, You moved mountains to get all of this talent, and yet you're still putting yourself in a box. Like, there, you don't need to play isolation in basketball if, if you can play a style of basketball that allows everyone to get in on the action. And you have to understand, with that kind of talent, they're, this is this is inexcusable. This is inexcusable. So they're not a bad team, but they right now they have a really, really, really bad habit. And part of that habit is playing down the competition. Because once the isolation basketball doesn't work, what do they do? They start trying to do what the other team's doing. So against the Warriors, they were losing. They and the Warriors went small. Guess what they did? They went small. They were playing against the Portland Trailblazers. Trailblazers start jacking up threes. Guess what they start doing? They start jacking up threes. So once the isolation style of basketball stops working, you know what they do? They go completely chameleon and they just jack the next person's style. And that's that's disgusting. And that's because they don't have the ball movement, don't have the player movement. And until they get this player movement and ball movement that they need, the, the this bad habit of isolation basketball is going to continue to plague them. And it's going to bury them in, in, a, in the playoffs. They can, they can very well go back to the NBA Finals and lose in even worse fashion than they did this past finals. You see what I'm saying? Because it's just like that. It's easy to figure you out. You already figured out. As opposed to running sets, running offense that could get everyone involved. You know, I and I personally, I'm tired of hearing we're gonna give the ball to Kevin Love. We're gonna put LeBron James in the post. I don't want to hear what your offense is going to do. I want to see what your offense is going to do. I don't want to hear about it. It's too simple for me to guard. If I got if I hear about it, I already know what you're going to do. You just need to show it. You need to run it. And they're not running it. You know what I'm saying? Like, And I don't know what, what they're going to do in terms of um, like trades or whatever. I, I wouldn't trade anybody. I would just challenge the guys to start playing a better style of basketball offensively. Defensively, I think they're fine. I feel that defensively, they turn up the pressure. They play very physical. They're tough on their opponents. Offensively, they're atrocious. That's bad. You the 21st in the in the East. 21st ranked 21st in the NBA, but like that in the East, you're 19 and 9 in the East. We are on the top of the Eastern Co- Conference, and yet you're struggling to score. And you know in the playoffs, if you're struggling to score now, when you go to the playoffs, it's even harder to score in the playoffs. So are we going to be watching a remake of the Detroit Pistons where they, you know, scoring 70 points, game end 72, 74? Are we going to see that again? I hope not. I really do not want to see that again. You know, people could say that uh, once Kyrie Irving comes back, things are going to change. Once, once everybody is 100% healthy, it's going to be easier. But I really, I really don't believe that because if you want to go back last year when they were playing the Bulls, they were playing that grind out style of basketball, and you could see in instances like the same amount of droughts that the Bulls had during that uh, series, semifinal series. The Cavaliers also had those same droughts. So even when healthy, they still had issues with scoring at times. And I don't, I don't know if the three ball is not falling, they're screwed. That's why they have to institute more ball movement. Get get some kind of sets. Steal some sets from the Spurs. Get some uh, back screening plays. You know, get LeBron or Kyrie Irving to back screen for their guys so then they can get the ball to operate with more ball movement. Stop running that. Stop running that play with LeBron coming off the corner. Like, if there's one play that they run, the point guard brings up the ball. Um... Kevin Love or Tristan Thompson screens for LeBron coming out of the corner of three, and he gets the ball. He goes full st- steam ahead into the paint. That's too predictable. You know, run run a few zipper cuts. Run a few elevator plays. Run some uh, elevator play, which turns into horns, which then you can... And if you don't know what these plays are, please, I'd like you to go ahead and research them. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, run some different sets. 
have some proven sets that can get you easy points, easy layups. Because if you continue to score in the 70s and 80s, you go into the NBA playoffs, you're screwed. Point blank period, you're screwed. That that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, then that's that's what always, has been always played in the Bulls. Every time they went to the playoffs, up until now, they've only been score only scoring like 80s. Uh, low 90s at times, and that's horrible. So for the Cavaliers, they're not a bad team, but they have bad habits. And if they continue to dis display these bad habits, well, that's going to make them a bad team. And you got to understand, a championship team isn't built during the playoffs. It's built throughout the regular season. It's those little tweaks. It's those little losses. It's those little habits. It's that one time you didn't hustle back. It's that one time you didn't box out. It's that one time you didn't make the connection. If I move the ball, it's going to be easier for my team. It's that one time you didn't make the connection. If I move myself, if I sacrifice for my teammate, then I can win. Those, those little instances during the regular season, that's what builds a championship team. It's not where they have big moments in the playoffs. You're like, oh, man, I didn't, I didn't see. You know, like A lot of people thought like when LeBron was scoring 40 points, and averaging almost like a triple double in the NBA Finals, they think that that started then. No, that started in the off season. So what I'm trying to tell you for the Cavs, if they don't nip this isolation basketball in the butt, what's gonna happen to them in the playoffs is not gonna be pretty. So let me know what you think. Do you think that this is an overreaction? Do you agree with it? Do you think that they have all the right habits? Do you do you like their their offense? Do you like isolation basketball? Do you like to see the ball in LeBron's hands? I want to hear what you have to say about it. You already hear what I have to say. Now I want to challenge you and see what you say about this. Because deep down inside for me, isolation basketball is ugly. I don't want to watch it. And it doesn't work. So let me know what you think. This is Vlad from Hoops Junction. Hoops Junction, where hoops meets hoopla. Peace.